Hey, thanks for checking out this video today about what to look for before closing up your floor. Now, we're working on a tiny house here, and so all the electrical and the plumbing that needs to be ran to various locations on the floor plan comes up from the floor. So we got to make sure that everything is absolutely perfect before we go and close up the floor with our uh, three-quarter inch uh, tongue and groove plywood. And so today I thought it would be a really good idea to kind of go through what I look for. And a lot of these things that I'm going to go over, like what to check the electric to, what the what to check the plumbing, all those sorts of things, they're going to apply to no matter what it is that you're doing, whether it's a tiny house or a regular house. And really all the principles are going to apply the same. So I hope you stick around. We're going to go through how to check your water lines, how to check your waste lines how to label and properly strap your electrical lines and um, a couple other little nuances that uh, we kind of forget about or that maybe you didn't know about. So uh, before we get started, I just want a quick intro. My name is Bob Clarizio. I'm a tiny house builder and have been for the better half of a decade. Um, my entire adult life has been devoted to custom home building and was featured on various tiny home shows such as Tiny House Big Living, Tiny House Nation. These days I've been focusing on extremely high-end custom units one at a time, me and a few other subcontractors, but primarily I'm building a vast majority of the house myself. And this gives me the opportunity to really uh, create some really custom uh, one-of-a-kind projects. This house in particular is actually both of these trailers right here, and it's going to be over half a million dollar project. The toilet for this house is a Numi 2.0 Kohler toilet that's worth $10,000, and the shower valve that goes in this unit is an electronic eight-port uh, eight valve that uh, th that system is another ten or $15,000 itself. So a lot of high-tech technological advances in this house, but we're not here to really get into that yet because we haven't even put the floor in. So what are some of the things that I look for when inspecting an underground system? I don't know what else to call it. So yeah, it's an underground system inside the trailer. Before we close things up, what, do I, what am I checking for? So when the with the water lines, I want to make sure that I got caps on every single port. And I, I do that when I'm plumbing it in. I don't go back and put caps on later because I don't want any debris or anything to fall into the water system because it can create clogs in the uh, elbows and in areas like that. And one of the reasons that that water line right there is in the frame is because I want to show you that loop right there. So that loop is from the hot to the cold. That way, we only have to put a valve, a pressure valve, on one side of the system, and then it'll pressurize the entire system. So what do we pressurize it to? So we want to pressurize our water system to about 100 PSI, and we want to just hold steady. It shouldn't lose any pressure, and you're going to want to hold about two hours or so. When the waste, with the waste line, it's a little, it's way less. So I pressurize my water waste line as well and what i i cap all the ends again and i bring that pressure to five pounds of psi that's gonna need to hold for at least 15 minutes but again if you got a good system it should hold for about an hour what's gonna fail on that system is typically the screw caps where you're capping off the ends so i wanted to run through that very quick next i take my blueprints and I double check all my measurements. On my blueprints, I make sure to put in extension marks from a central location. So I pick one spot on the trailer and I pull all of my measurements from there. That way I can walk down the, the whole unit with the tape measure and double check to make sure that everything that's coming up through the floor is exactly where it needs to be. Um, especially on interior walls. When you get to the exterior walls, uh, as long as you're within the wall, I mean, you can then get over to wherever you need to be. And you really have, you know, 
the the rumor of the the run of error is only from the exterior forward three and a half inches in this case because it's three and a half inch walls. But when you get into the interior walls, you got to be a lot more precise because you only have that three and a half inches of error in whichever direction, sometimes both directions. And the last thing you want is to go set your walls and you got pipes coming up in the middle of the floor. And uh, so take the time before you put the floor sheeting in to go through and make sure that everything is exactly where it needs to be. When it comes to the electric, we want to make sure that we're using a, um, a decent labeling system. The laser labels, that's what I use. I love it because they stick really well and they're easily legible. So I would strongly recommend it. For the 80 bucks, it'll save you so many headaches because there's so many times where you'll write with a marker on the side of the Rolmex cable and then over the course of the job, it gets faded and or gets rubbed off or whatever. But... Those labels, I mean, they're waterproof. They'll stand up to pretty much anything. That way, they don't fall off and um, they'll stand the test of time. And what I'll do is for every run that I'm going to run in the floor. And so when we talk about home runs for wiring, we're talking about from the panel because that's where everything goes home to. So that's when we're saying home run. It's not we're not, not we are not going to get out of the park, but in this case, uh, it's back to the panel and from the panel to wherever our location is. And so those are our main feeds. And from that point is where we then distribute power to whatever room or area of the house. But what we're running through the floor is primarily home runs. So in this case, we have um, a home, home runs that are running from the panel to the kitchen, the powder room, uh, and then also a handful of lines that go across and go into the other unit. Once we finished running all the wires that we need to throughout the floor of our tiny house, it's now time to run the mini split uh, line sets. And those are the copper lines that are going to go from the outside compressor to the mini split heads that are in various locations throughout the unit. And we wanna make sure we get those lines in the exact spot where they come up into the wall. And also we gotta be very careful not to break those lines in the course of building the wall construction. Once we have everything in the floor, it's now time to lay down all of our plywood sheeting. A couple of things we want to keep in mind there is we want to make sure that we're running it as straight as possible. So we want to start with a control line. And the easiest way to do that is to measure two exact same distances on each end, snap a line, and then follow that line when putting our plywood down and then just work it forward until you get to the very end or edge of the unit or deck or whatever it is that you might be sheeting, for example. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is when we are breaking our plywood on our joists, we wanna make sure to keep each row's breaking points away from each other. We don't wanna line those all up. We wanna make sure that they're staggered apart from each other. This is going to ensure the strongest and uh, most rigid uh, floor possible. On top of that, we're also gonna use foam glue and we're going to screw the floor together. And that's eight inch, that's screws that are eight inches apart throughout what they call the field. And then when you get up on an edge or a seam, we wanna go every four inches. It's a little bit overkill, but it's what we have found out to make things, uh, to where they don't move and uh and as you can see behind me we have started framing uh the first half of the unit and we ran into some big problems we had to cut out the roof uh this is we we build these units in a pole barn and it has these giant 70 foot wide trusses and we had to cut them out and we're going to go through how we did that because I couldn't find anything anywhere on anybody that had actually done that. So next week's video is all about how we raised the roof and cathedraled our ceiling. And also we're gonna get into the framing of these units and hopefully we have this one done by that time as well. So until next time, subscribe, like, send your comments below. I'm happy to answer them and I will see you next time.